Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so the ayes have it. Next item of business is citizens' communication. And, and let me just say, anybody wishing to address the uh, Planning Commission on something not on the agenda can please do so now. Okay, so we have no one. So we'll go ahead and uh, start our development review. Okay. Good evening, Commissioners. Um, first item on the agenda is a variance to Section 21-82A1 and Section 21-82A2, and a final plat approval for original town site resubdivision division number 81. Um, this is located at 1002 and 1004 South Liberty. At point, it's a 0.229 acre tract of land at the intersection of East 2nd Street and South Liberty Street. The property is situated in Lot 3, Block 135, 134 of the original town site of Victoria, Victoria County, Texas. Um, the variance section 21-82A1 will allow for the owner to waive the minimum 6,000 square foot lot size requirement and instead be platted with a lot size of 4,995 square feet. The second variance section 21-82A2 will allow for the owner to waive the 50-foot minimum lot width requirement and instead plot the property with lots 45 feet in width. Um, the property previously contained three residential structures. The structure at 1004 South Liberty was demolished between 2010 and 2013. Um, without variances, this tract of land would have to remain as one single-family residential lot when it could accommodate two single-family residential homes. Um, as you know, with subdivision variances, they are um, required to meet the following variance review criteria. Um, staff recommends approval of the variance request as the subject property could accommodate two single-family residential lots, each with an adequate building envelope, even after the application of the required setbacks and facilitate redevelopment of the property. Um, if Planning Commission recommends approval of the variance request described above, um, Development Services staff recommends approval of the final plat subject to the City Council approval of the described variance request. Um, and I can answer any questions you might have. Was the building that was demolished, was it a residential building or was it a... Yes, it was residential. Okay. Jared, do you remember, is this something when I was reading through this and drove by there and I couldn't remember for sure, but was this, the building that was removed, was this one that they were ordered to demolish it because it was unsafe? I thought we looked in the case history, at least the one at... Um, 1002 and 1004, neither of those appeared in the uh, code enforcement files. Now, the third residence on the on 2nd Street or whatever that is. The larger one. I don't remember that one. That one's been gone longer, um, a longer period of time. But you can pull up the you know, Google Street View, and you can clearly see um, 102 and 104 were twin structures. They were obviously built at the same time, probably rental property originally or something. But they were similar structures. Does anybody have any questions of uh, planning staff? Mm -hmm. No one? I'm good. I'm in approval of the variance. Okay. It meets all the requirements. Ma'am? It meets all the variance okay. uh, requirements. I move to Wait, approve be, it. Before we, does anybody have any comments? All right. So we have a motion by Ms. Wyatt. Uh, you have to, to do a public hearing what? first. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. Sorry, hearing. sorry. All right. Is anybody wishing to address the Planning Commission regarding uh, this variance request? No one? Okay. You want to stay? <laughs> okay, we have a motion by Ms. Wyatt. A second. Okay, and a second Ms. by Ms. Welder. All those in favor of approving the variance say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so the variance is approved. I recommend approval of the final plat. Okay. So we have a recommendation and to, uh, uh, from Ms. Wyatt. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay. Ms. Herrera, we have a second from Ms. Herrera regarding approval of the final plat. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So the variance and the final plat are approved. Next item of business. Mr. Chairman? If, if we could, we've got a lot of folks here that I think are here to talk about item number three. Well, Would there be I, a problem with moving it up? Mm -mm. Let, let, let's go ahead. I, I was, I was going to try it's and uh, it's 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 take take long. Long. yeah, I keep that to a, to a minimum. Anyway, go ahead. Second item. Good 
Good evening, Planning Commission. Um, some of you that have been on the commission for, for a while will be familiar with this subdivision. For uh, so your new ones, we'll try to catch you up to speed. Uh, this is a preliminary plat extension request for Capstone Estates. Uh, just to familiarize you with the location, it's uh, at the corner of Tate and Northside Roads up, up there at the uh, northwest uh, section of Victoria, uh, just uh, kind of northeast of the Tuscany subdivision. Uh, it's a 117 lot preliminary plat, uh, or 117 single family residential preliminary plat with uh, two commercial lots. Um, the original preliminary plat for Capstone uh, was approved by Planning Commission in June 2007. Uh, the first two phases uh, have been constructed, and the third phase, which is literally at the corner of Tate and Northside, is uh, construction is underway. Um, as a result of the preliminary plat being um, approved in 2007, there have been a number of uh, preliminary plat extensions that have been required in order to keep the development active and moving forward. Uh, you can see those in your staff report, uh, previous approvals in 2012, 2013, 2014, and 2015. Uh, so the owner is requesting his fifth extension to that preliminary plat. Effective year period, you can see uh, also in your staff report the city code language, section 21-39, uh, where it talks about uh, phasing of the plats uh, and the extensions of the uh, preliminary plat. Um, so the developers followed through with all of those. Um, there is a section uh, in there in the middle that I have highlighted um, that an extension to that five-year time frame shall be limited, uh, limit shall be granted by the director upon request of the developer unless the director uh, determines that development conditions have substantially changed uh, in the area. And so this case, uh, I believe as I did last year, the development conditions have changed. Um, rather significantly, the development of Tuscany subdivision has brought utilities uh, much closer than they were when the original preliminary and final plats were approved. Um, the, um, what, what we call phase four, which is that uh, yellow block that's at the, um, kind of on the bottom of the capstone subdivision, uh, utilities are within 850 feet of that area and within 2,200 feet of the area currently under development. Of course, the, the part that he has a final plat on, the third part that's under construction, it's already under, it already has an approved uh, final plat, so it would be allowed to go forward regardless of the decisions that are made tonight. Um, as I sta said, staff continues to believe that development conditions have changed in this area. Um, there are remaining some uh, sanitary sewer uh, connection limitations in this area. Uh, we have capacity for approximately 120 additional units in that area until some sanitary sewer capacity improvements are done, and those are uh, currently planned to be in the 2018 uh, capital improvement budget for the city, uh, which will uh, greatly expand and no longer, we will no longer have the similar uh, limitations that we have today. Um, but it's for those reasons that staff believes um, that we should not approve um, the extension or grant the extension of the preliminary plat. Uh, it's a similar recommendation we made last year. Of course, Planning Commission chose to, uh, to, to allow it to go forward. And of course, you can do that again uh, tonight if you so choose. So I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any. I do have a couple of pictures here. There's a bigger view of the preliminary plat. Of course, that was in your staff report. Um, and then there's just kind of an overall uh, picture of kind of the annexation history. You can see how the city has developed out. Of course, when this started in 2007, the city uh, limits were, were all the way down uh, at the intersection of Northside and Navarro. Um, so the city is, is certainly, as you can see from this photo, kind of marching its way uh, north with the most recent annexations that were done uh, two years ago. So I'd be happy to answer any it questions. I'm sorry, Jared. I, I, you, I didn't hear what you said. I, you recommended denial. I, I, we, I looked up my notes from last year, and right, we continue to recommend that 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 we allow the preliminary plat to to expire. Okay. As we did last year, we still feel that the circumstances are such that it should be allowed to expire. The result of that means that uh, once 
the uh, part that he has a final plat on is done, a new preliminary plat would have to be done. The new preliminary plat would require the remaining properties to remaining portion of the property that hasn't been developed to be developed uh, with city water and, and sanitary sewer extensions, which would result in it basically being more likely being developed city style, curb and gutter and all that. So that's that's what happens if you allow the preliminary plat to die in order to 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 develop the remaining property, a new preliminary plat would be required. And because of how close the utilities are today, that would trigger the extensions of those. So. And it's expected that they would you would do those upgrades in twenty eighteen, the sewer That's currently the plan, yes ma'am. Does anybody have any other questions of Jared? And the applicant is, is in the audience yes. if you have questions okay. for us. This is I know we debated this one a long time last last year. Number of extensions requested? This is how many? This is the fifth. fifth one. And there's not a limit in the city code, so we could you could you know, just continue to grant them. Last year we never got back to it. I believe the number of extensions that we could allow. We never got, we need to address that. I'm sorry. Okay. Of course, you know, without it, with with it being the way it is, you know, planning commission can set its own, you know, make its own determination of five is enough or ten is enough or you know, whatever <laughs> point you want. So we don't have to have a. I don't know that we have to have a code revision that that establishes a limit. We could just or be setting ourselves up for a variance. Establish, establish a precedence for the commission. Yes, sir. Okay. We can do that in house. So we, we could we could essentially just stipulate that and as a precedent, or could we make that a, in write that into some letter? I, I don't know. Do you send the guy a letter or not, Mr. Rampley? Did you send him a letter last year saying you are hereby granted a one-year extension? I guess I don't remember if we did a letter or not. It's not something we have to do. He was in the audience and knew he received it, and sure. and and we subsequently approved and. You know, brought a final plat for the phase that's under construction to you, um, so that just extended its life. But you know, obviously, if it's denied, we would send a letter, you know, commenting on the on the denial. And it, if for some reason, if you chose to deny it, it doesn't actually um, expire until July right. of this year. So there's still time to, if the developer chose to to submit a final plat for, you know, the additional phase or phases and and keep it moving forward. So. Jared, and I've discussed all those <coughs> options with the, the applicant, so I'm not telling you anything that he doesn't already know. For the benefit of the commissioners that weren't here last year when this was debated a lot, could you explain what the ramifications of now that the city utilities have expanded further than when the original submission was turned in and where they're going to be going, what impact allowing the the request to go through would have on the city? Well, it, it, it impacts our annexation ability and they, the cost of annexing that property. As you can see, we're getting, we're getting close up there and, and you know, one day uh, we would like to annex that area. So um, the more lots that are out there without water and sewer that are on private water wells and septic systems, uh, the more expensive it will be for the city to annex it at a future day, meaning the city would is required to extend public water and sewer lines down there um, as part of that annexation. So that's why we have this in our policy that if you if you develop within three quarters of a mile of city utilities, the developer taps and extends it, so it pushes that expense and protects that that buffer area that's close to the city uh, and and keeps the city reduces the city's expenses uh, from annexation. And it also puts a burden on potential homeowners out there that they pay to have a well put in and then X number of years down the road, the city water. comes along, runs city water down the street, city sewer down the street, and the septic investment and the well investment will go out the window, correct? Yes. Um, of course, the city has had a recent precedent of allowing property owners to to extend, you know, continue to use those facilities if they wish for a number of years so that they can capitalize on that investment. But 
I think you said in our previous notes, it said 10 years to amor amortor amortize their well and septic system. Right. That's what you said the right. last time. Right, which is, which is part of what we've uh, done on that north of our annexation that's in, that you see shaded there. Uh, we had developments that were less than a year old, and here we are bringing, you know, so we offered them that um, ability. And then others are out there that, you know, have older aging infrastructure, and so this, you know, the city infrastructure is coming in in just the nick of time so they don't have to reinvest in a septic system that can tap into the city if they're choosing. Anybody have any more questions of Jared? All right. Mr. Rampley, you want to, anything? I'm sure you want to come. <clears throat> if you don't mind, can you yeah. state your name and yeah. address for yeah, the Yeah, Tim record, Rampley, please. 104 Wilshire, Victoria. All right. uh, yes, I've gotten extensions every year. Last year was the first time that it was not a, an extension from uh, Jared, and so it went to you because the situation out there has changed. Uh, we have development going on close by. The argument I would make is that it's to the city's advantage for me to continue to get extensions for the simple reason that what's best for the city, as uh, Charmel and John and Jared have all told me, that they everyone knows density is the key to a healthy city. The uh, situation last year was that we were so up against the, the final date that I decided I'd just call my engineers and said, submit a final plat, let's get it done immediately. Even though I knew I might get an extension, and so we did get an extension last year, so I didn't have to do that, but I just felt like I had to uh, get that final plat submitted. So I'm in that situation again. I mean, I can afford to put in a final, submit a final plat and do one acre lots there. And so that's what I will do if I don't get the extension. It's to the city's advantage that uh, I have city lots, small, or if we don't have that, which I don't plan to do, um, half acre lots. And so uh, Jared had actually approached me about that a year and a half ago or two years because he, everyone recognized it's better for cities from the standpoint of their, their financial health to have higher density. And so our uh, desire would still be to, to do just that, but uh, we'll be on a um, you know, a timeline here if we don't have an extension that we'll just have to submit a final plat that's uh, one acre lots. And that's not my best interest. It's not the city's best interest. Um, you know, so, so my thinking is it's, it's wise for you to approve an extension. Uh, I think that's, that's, but I would ask Jared about his thoughts related to that comment. I, I think he would agree with that. So e even though he's not recommending a, uh, an extension. So, you have any questions? If you're not opposed to the idea of making them half-acre lots, mm -hmm. why not just do the final plat as half-acre lots and move forward? I would, and I, I met with John and Charmel, and, and they assured me they wanted to. And it was proposed to me by the city, but when they looked at it, it there just weren't the dollars there to do it. They didn't have the money to, to go forward at that time. Because they would have to allow me to use city water or sewer. You have to do one or the other by state law. And of course, water is across the street, so it's an easy matter to bring water across and to provide water to each lot. That's a simple matter. But it just wasn't uh, available at the time, and the cost of the city would have been substantial, and, and uh, Jarmel said, we'd like to do it, but we cannot do it. We just cannot do it, don't have the dollars, so. Jared, do you have any input on that? I'm trying to remember. It, it, it's been a year, year and a half since we talked about that. Certainly, um, that's, higher density is is, is better because it, you're spending the same amount of dollars to to maintain, you know, per linear foot. And so, if you've got, you know, more lots per acre, then it reduces our 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 cost. Um, to go to half acre lots, that's we would have to do it. A new preliminary plat would have to be done for the part that we're talking about. Um, I don't know. If we, I don't recall if we were talking about the city participating in, in extending the water to you, or or if we were just talking about have you looked at doing you know you extending city water and and you know getting down the half acre lot and does that make financial sense? And that I don't. I don't know the answer to that. Yeah, but, I don't remember. Uh, that That was an option that we were discussing uh, with Mr. Rampey. Is there a way to get some additional density 
you know, by you going and getting water and then, and, and then doing a variance to septic system so that, you know, there's um, a higher density uh, out there than, than there will be if we continue at one acre lots. Um, so would we, because water is, would it, we have to allow the, the initial or the existing preliminary plat to expire and then have him resubmit a new preliminary plat or could he resubmit a modified preliminary plat? He could resubmit a modified preliminary plat any, at any time. Obviously, if it expires, um, you know, he'd have to submit a new preliminary plat in order to, to build additional phases. Uh, if you grant an extension, there's nothing that would keep him from coming back six months from now with a modified preliminary plat. Um, to do kind of what we were talking about of like water only with, with, with private septic systems, we're still talking about a variance needed to, to do that. but. So we're, we're a year, not quite a year, after this same thing came up last year. It doesn't sound like we're any closer to the city and the developer having worked something out that's amicable for both. Is that a fair statement? Sure. Yeah. But we, we, I've never approached the city about it. We, we, last year was about the other side, and we went ahead and, I mean, we've got a street being built to be done very soon now. We have the, and the electricity is in and the gas is in, and so we're, we're almost done with uh, the other side, this is about on the east side, yeah. Right, and his, your road bed was kind of already partly in, so the developer's preference is to develop the part he's doing now because part of the road bed was already mm -hmm. in, and right the timing the worked better for that, and so, right. yeah, there, there haven't been discussions about the, de detailed discussions about trying to develop the southern portion. I mean, I'd, I'd, I guess in a perfect world, I'd like to see the city and yourself working together where everybody gets what's good and right for everybody. Uh, it may be a little utopian in thought, but it just seems like this keeps coming back to us and it, both sides are banging their heads against the wall because neither one is talking to the other one. Um, that concerns me a little bit that this is, if we, get, if we grant the extension, it concerns me this is going to end up being an ongoing until the two parties sit down and actually work out something that's amicable for both. Yeah. Well, I'm happy to do that. I just um, Mr. And assume that we may get extensions, and, and if uh, if we but don't, then of course after I'll. After the discussion last yeah, year. Yeah, I was going to say it. It was, it was yeah. not a real easy choice for us to give the extension. I'm curious as to why the new plat hadn't been done in the last year then, when you weren't. No, no, I plan. submitted a final plat uh, immediately after our meeting last year. I did on submit on a final the, plan. On the one where but on that one no, no, side. No, 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 not on that side. On no. Side. But see, yeah. I can still do that. I knew there'd be time come this year. That's why I requested the extension now where, rather than waiting till when's it over, Jerry, in July? July. 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 Rather than waiting to June and then having to be a rush and tell my engineers get out there tomorrow, um, I knew that we'd have time to go ahead and. Does it have to be a year? Can we make a conditional extension? I think the code is real specific about a year. year. Yeah. Well, if we did another extension, could we make it the last one? I mean, basically say there will be no more. Yeah, that's that's what I'm saying. If you put that in a letter or some some. Oh, that's pretty much what we said last year. Yeah, it's well, but we're talking about a different. Well, really, technically, it's a different development. A different area. It, yeah. Yeah, but same, we knew same this. Same situation. He, different yeah, area. he knew this was coming. That's. I don't. I don't think we can. We, <clears throat> We can ex he can hear and express, and we can express what you're saying, but there would be nothing that would prevent him from coming back and and and, and submitting another, another extension next year. Um, except that the majority and the body of the, that exists next year. <laughs> well, except the majority of the commissioners that are sitting here are going to still be sitting here a year right, from now. Right. Right. And we have long memories. <laughs> <laughs> I think so we, could choose to we had the long the memory year. last year too. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all could choose to grant the extension and, and make it clear that that's it. If you want, if you want, but it's not going to be binding because sure. he can. There's nothing that would prevent him from coming back and asking for it again. And of course, the code, be a, the code allows it. And, you know, Mr. Rampley, do you see any any resolution within a year? Well, I think the best thing, of course, is for me to. I haven't had a conversation with uh, Jared about about it or the city because Jared didn't have the power to make that ultimate decision. 
that's kind of, um, I'm not sure who makes it, Jared, is that? Ultimately, if we're talking about expending funds, it's going to be council. Okay, council. Yeah. I mean, I can okay. recommend all day, but. <laughs> yeah. I, that's all it is. You know, last, last time I think it was, uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I think, um, um, who's our director, L Lynn Short. Mm -hmm. I think Lynn Short is the one who told Charmel that there just weren't the funds to do it. And so um, it never went to council at all, but. Um, you know, where, where I'm at is it, it's, it's fine if you do, it's fine if you don't. I, I see it as a win-win to eventually have half acre. Now, the big win for the city would be for me to have it in city lots because then it's really high density, but I just, you know, I'm not going to go there. So I'll go ahead and put in one acre lots. And, and, and that's fine. I mean, that still makes the land profitable, but the best thing, of course, would be to have the half and half. You want to say something, Mr. John? Comiskey, you yeah. want to address the commission, please? Yes, sir. I want to clarify uh, a couple of things about um, kind of the series of events and meetings and discussions we've had over the last couple of years. It is our strong preference that the, if the subdivision is going to be served by city utilities, that it be served by water and sewer. Um, to do one or the other would still require a variance. Uh, recommended by you and approved by City Council. We did, we did have a conversation uh, about uh, the possibility of supporting uh, a water-only um, option with half-acre lots. Uh, later during that kind of back and forth, we came back. The issue is that to, to serve the entire, to annex, if we choose to annex, not, and not a voluntary annexation, but a, an involuntary annexation, we're going to have to serve the entire area with water and sewer. We don't have funding in the CIP available for that, and I, I believe at least until 2018, and that's tentative. That could change next year. Um, if that funding is needed for something else, it could change tomorrow. But that's the soonest, okay, that we can get water and sewer out there. We went back to the drawing board and found a way that we could route sewer from the east rather than coming up from, uh, from the southwest to serve this, this development and the remainder of, of the develop, developable property um, with sewer that could be done fairly soon. But that's at the developer's expense. That's not a city project. It's strictly going in to serve that development. And that option was not acceptable to the developer, and I understand that. That's, that's his choice. He has an approved plat. He can come back and submit a final plat for the rest of the phases uh, between now and July. He's perfectly legal. Um, we can still come in in 2018 or 19 or 30 and, and do an annexation and extend utilities to the property. Um, it's just there was we did not find a, a solution that was agreeable to the city and to the developer uh, that either of us was prepared to finance uh, a year ago or a year and a half ago or however long ago they had that discussion, and we're still not there. Um, it's just a fact. There's sewer, <laughs> sewer and water have to be extended, and they can't be done for free. Um, so the developer can either choose, I want to do a city-style subdivision with small lots and city-style streets and bring in water and sewer at my cost or not. Uh, or I can wait to see how far, I'm, uh, how far I get in this development before the city's ready to do their annexation. And, you know, the chips will fall at that time. But uh, that's where we are. Uh, it's cheaper now than it was in 2007 uh, to get water and sewer there, but it still involves a fairly significant project. And to get the capacity that we need, um, we're relying on, we're doing one downstream project right now. We're, in fact, about to start breaking ground on the lower uh, phase of this sewer expansion project um, has, has recently been let, or is, maybe it's just about to be, but um, that project then leads to another one. We have to get the sewer, the larger sewer main uh, up uh, Millette Drive, down Ball Airport Road, all the way to North Side. That's a big project. So it's, it's a multi-phased um, approach to get that done. So hopefully that clarifies why yeah. we haven't met in the middle in this situation, because there really isn't a middle to meet in. We just uh, we haven't come up with a solution. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Does anybody have any more questions of Mr. Rampley? Okay. Um, I'd add that, uh, you know, it, I, I'm happy to this year uh, meet with 
Jared, John, Charmel, whoever I need to meet with and, and see if, if we can, I mean, I would bring the water out. I don't mind doing that. But uh, it, the thing is, it saves the city a lot of money if those lines are put in now rather than after their driveways in and all. Plus, there's higher revenue for the city for eternity, until now until eternity, if we have double the density. So it's, it's a, the goal for everyone is to get there. The question is, where are the dollars? Uh, you know, how are we going to do that? So, so in my mind, uh, just extending the extension gives us leave more time to try to get that worked out. So, thank you. OK, thank you. All right. Uh, we have any discussion amongst uh, commissioners? Any thoughts? Anybody? What? The extension. If, if the extension else? is not given, we're back in the same situation we were last year. Mm -hmm. That's the case you got. Maybe, maybe they can uh, then uh, you know, in the next 12 months they can work something out. Well, but if the money's not there, uh, yeah, the I, I don't see them working yeah. anything yeah. out anytime soon. Yeah, with the condition of some of our city streets, I think there's priorities for funds that would be available. Building a new sewer and water line out to a new development. Anybody have any other thoughts, comments? It's a tough one. I mean, Mr. Rampey's obviously wanting to try to do something that, that makes certain financial sense for the city, but it's one of those things where you still have to have the money to do it, and we don't have the money to do it. And while he's he's got good motivations, but he's also looking out for his interests as well. I mean, we all recognize that businessmen aren't in money to lose money. Um, if we don't have the money, we're going to keep extending this and extending this and extending this, and I just am worried that this is just going to become an ongoing long-term cycle of giving them extensions because the city may or may not have the funds to do it. What, what is the burden on the city to give them an extension? What does it cost well, the city to give them an extension? It's a good point. They're, it doesn't exactly. cost the city anything. Exactly. So. I don't think we have a choice. So as long as he's con he w is willing to continue to uh, ask for an extension, and if the commissioner, planning commission is willing to provide him the extension, what's 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 at loss? Didn't cost him any money. Didn't cost the city any money. If the extension is denied at that point, he files a final plat between here and July. Well, he moves for acre lots. For one acre lots, as it, as existing plat is. And we, that cannot be denied because the preliminary has already been approved. Essentially what the extension does is minimize the developer's risk because you're allowing him to then prolong the filing of those final plats. Whereas if the extension's not approved, to keep the subdivision as in conformance with the preliminary plat, he would have to file all of the future phases of the final plats before July. As acre lots. As one acre lots. So, so you're, if by granting extensions, you're allowing him to prolong the development or to, the whole entire development to look at the, what the current market rates are. So you're minimizing his risk. Certainly, certainly. Um, yeah, I don't want to leave with having given you the impression that this is the last time I'd ask for an extension. Um, I would anticipate maybe asking one next year, the one year after year. So maybe four years from now, then I'm ready to, to do that. Sure. At that point, uh, you're right, it doesn't cost me anything, doesn't cost us anything just to get extensions. But at that point, we may be at the point where uh, it's a very low cost thing for the city. It's not a high cost because water and sewer will be across the street, the rest of the lines will be done. So it's a minimal issue. The benefit for the city is now double the density for eternity. From now until eternity, it's done. So I see it as in the city, it's in my interest, but I see it's in the city's interest to get extensions until it's not a big cost for the city or for me. So. Thank you. Okay. Anybody have any other comments? I'm, I'm trying to rationalize it in my head. I, I, any thoughts? I mean, there, 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 in my mind, is that you have to look at it as a business. There is zero cost to the city for us to grant him an extension. Is there any con to what's being proposed? Yeah. I mean, the, what is it? Please, go ahead. There's Great. nothing that says that he gets an extension this year, next year, four years down the road, and still submits a final plat for one-acre lots, not submitting plat 
for high density or higher density. He waits until the city brings water and sewer across the street from his development, submits his final plat for one acre lots, and the city has to bring. And that was part of the discussion last year is the future property owners having to incur the cost then of converting over to city utilities once they've already invested in water wells and stuff. Well, system. until he turns the final plat in, he can't, they, they right. can't develop. So, right. But there's nothing to say that, I mean, while we was believe him and year. we want to believe him, there's nothing to say that when he submits that final plat, it's not for one acre lots, not city sized lots but or nothing's half acre changed lots. from what it would be if yeah. he had to do it now anyway. I know. I, I know. If we have a problem with the the number of extensions, then maybe the the rules ought to change. Say, you know, you can ask for an extension up to five times, six times, whatever. But we don't have that. No, we discussed that the last time, but obviously it was it was nothing we that was put in place or, or anything. And and along those same lines, we I think we were all somewhat hesitant the last time, but we did hoping we would be further along, but here we are a year again. If we had put that, I can't say it's a stipulation, but it, if we had thrown that out there, and we kind of did in a roundabout way. Yeah, but I think if you want to put in stipulation, I think it needs to be applicable to all extension, not only a case-by-case -case basis. Certainly. So in this case, I think you penalize them for the rules that we didn't implement so we're saying that you can apply for as many extensions as you want, but in this case, we're not going to give it to you because at a future date, it may not be economical for the city. I mean, it's a, it's a catch-22. Well, it is, and I actually think, you know, if I re refer back to our discussions last year, it's also a concern for the future property owners. That was the That, was that the invest key. in a well and a septic and then don't get – now – that was, I think, right about the same time where we were making the negotiations with the North Navarro folks uh, as to how long we would, we would amortize that in. And I think 10 years uh, was a good good compromise. But, you know, still 10 years on a, you know, $6,000, $7,000 a well and a $8,000 septic system, it's still not a great return if you happen to buy a house for the year before we annex it. Um, and that, that was that was the big reason why we had this discussion last year was because future of future property owners. Anybody else? Any other comments? Okay. Uh, I guess the, uh, the motion before the commission is to approve an extension. All those in favor say aye. 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 Well, there hasn't been a motion yet, I don't believe. What? Omar made a motion. A I don't think he had a second. I'm sorry? Has there been a motion? I can't make that motion. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> we have a motion. I thought he'd already made it. I thought he'd made it. What? I'm sorry I didn't. I thought he had made the motion. Okay. I, 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 sorry, Omar. I apologize. It's okay. My fault. Omar, go ahead and make the motion. I make the motion to approve the extension. All those in favor say aye. I need a second. Uh, need a second. Oh. All right. Um, man, I am way off base today. I okay. It. All right. We have a second from Ms. Wyatt. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, extension granted. Last item. Uh, the third item on our agenda is for Trinity Episcopal Church. This is a variance to section 21-92 to reduce the number of off-street parking spaces required. Um, this property is located at 1501 North Glass. It is a 1.787 acre tract located near the intersection of North Glass Street and East Colorado Street. Um, the owners are wishing to put a temporary building on the property um, in the parking lot. Um, this temporary building will be used to add classrooms while the school begins phase one of their future expansion project. Um, you have the photos in the staff report about what their phases are. Um, the City of Victoria Code of Ordinance um, states Section 21-92 requires the following property to have 97 off-street parking spaces. Um, this variance would allow the owner to instead have only 56 spaces. Um, without variances, this tract of land would most likely be able be unable to complete future phases of ex expansion. Um, sorry. <clears throat> um, currently, this property is underparked by 29 spaces as it was developed prior to existing parking regulations. Um, with the addition of the temporary classroom building placed on a portion of the existing off-street parking, um, the parking the property will be then underparked by 41 spaces. 
Um, as you know, with subdivision variances, they're required to meet the following criteria. Um, staff recommends approval of the variance request as the proposed building is temporary um, and allows for reinvestment and redevelopment of the campus. Um, upon completion of the entire campus project, the church will also be um, more in compliance with the required parking than it is today. Um, and as well, the um, architect for the project is here and he would like to make a presentation as well. All right. Anybody have any questions of Mr. Charles? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Charles. Uh, Mr. Heimseth. Uh, Mr. Chair, Commission members, I'm Ben Heimsath with Heimsath Architects. Um, my firm has been working with the church and the school in developing a long-term master plan, and what you're looking at is a requirement in order to do the first step to begin the implementation of that program. Uh, just by, I've got a quick overview of the master plan, and then I can go into a little bit more of an analysis so you'll see the purpose for the, vari uh, the variance. If that's Mr. Hunt, Ben, just one comment. If you could keep it to five minutes, we'd appreciate it. I'll absolutely do my best. Yes, and do we advance the slides? Or how do we do that? Did I cover it? Oh, there we go. Uh, just wanted to point out that uh, though you have the variance request for the specific property of the church, this impacts uh, the two lots and even the uh, additional uh, property where the church currently has the youth house. Uh, we are, in doing the master plan, working with the character and preserving the uh, elements of both the church and the school. And I just want to take a moment because we do have members of the church and the school who are here tonight. And I do believe that none of them need to necessarily come up and speak, but uh, I just want to make sure, uh, you all want to just stand for a moment and make sure everybody is uh, able to be recognized because this is something that people have invested in. Yeah, we, we, we've noticed. Okay. We recognize <laughs> together. Not, not intimidating at all. No. <laughs> and, and we're, and I have to say, we're, we're, we went through quite a process. Uh, this was, a, it's a very unique relationship. Uh, we work and specialize working with churches and we do a lot of work with schools, but this is a, a community where the church and the school truly have their history tied together. Uh, we went through a open forum uh, where we just brainstormed ideas uh, with all of the church and uh, uh, school members invited. A leadership group was at the retreat center, uh, the spiritual renewal center there south of Victoria with us, uh, where we brainstormed a variety of ideas. Uh, the ultimate long-term will have uh, a two-story addition to the school, uh, it will be done in such a way that will ease the access in and out of the neighborhood. In fact, this suggestion of having uh, what you're looking at is the, the frontage uh, of the school from Vine Street. Uh, this is actually at the suggestion of some of the neighbors because we had a, a, an open meeting with neighbors as well in the early stages or the, the, the developed stages of the planning process. Uh, the key element and what really is part of the phase one is the existing uh, school use on what is primarily the church block. And the uh, master plan envisions, as you see in the, uh, first the computer diagram, but then in the watercolor, uh, replacing the one-story building uh, by doing so being able to have a much better facility that would allow both school and church uses to remain on this block while continuing the character of the existing buildings, the open space, the courtyard. In fact, we'll actually make the side courtyard right now uh, a better situation because they've got a, uh, an existing portable that we're taking away uh, because we'll be able to build permanent facilities. So what you had in your packet, and part of the reason for going through the, the vision with you is that the criteria for uh, showing what the parking count is that the variance is being asked of. Uh, as Will pointed out, that's using all of the calculations of the current code. But the fact is, is that what exists now has been that way a long time. And I think the church and the school have done a lot to work with the neighbors. Uh, and even in the course of this variance request, have had some ad additional suggestions to continue to make the relationship of parking work. But if you were to take the current arrangement, and I think actually the, the other slides, getting the, the final count from the city, uh, we, we had a couple of different numbers, but it is 97. But if you were to take that just as it is now, we're already working, as uh, you have noted, as a, at, at a deficit. With the portable, which is the uh, uh, first step, we're going to go down. 
but when the whole master plan is finished, as you see in this slide, uh, actually we'll have a net increase. So uh, most of that in this arrangement will be an increase with new parking uh, when we do the youth building replacement, which is up there on uh, Colorado Street. Uh, and that is going to be a building process that's going to take longer than something we could do in order to meet the needs of the school this coming school year. But by next school year, we would have that finished for sure. Uh, also, by the time we finish uh, uh, the addition on Vine Street, we'll have additional parking uh, over on the school property. So again, still would be a deficit, but a net increase total over what we have. Now, when the portable comes for this period of time before we get that first parking built, uh, we're going to go down below what we have because even though we're restriping the parking uh, up in that corner, uh, we are in fact still placing the portable in a portion of that corner of the parking lot. Uh, by the time we're finished with the uh, phase one at the youth area, however, again, in the phase of about a year, we get back up again and we'll actually be increasing the parking. So the portable itself is there because there's nowhere else for the school and the church uses to go in all the different phases when we're actually taking the one-story buildings away, portions away, replacing them with two-story. Of course, they're all integrated with the preservation work as well. Uh, and so it's just allowing that uh, period of time when one part is being under construction to have this over a sequence of a couple of phase projects to then finally come up to compliance or as close to compliant, or improve, I should say improve the existing condition. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions of Mr. Heimseth? So the goal is to move the youth house within two years? The youth house is uh, one of the highest priorities in the phase one, and the youth house will actually be replaced with a more efficient structure, uh, that, that converted building really doesn't yield a lot of effective space in its arrangement. So it'll be moved off and we'll actually be building new uh, in that location. Now, I'm not a great mathematician, as my husband always, always tells me, but we're talking about 12 parking spaces, right? That's right. We're talking about a variance that basically is going to affect 12 parking spaces. That's, that's the, I mean, worst, I, the worst I just case. don't see any problem with approving the variance mm -hmm. myself. Okay. Yeah. Especially when they're going to end up ultimately with more than what they have now. Thank you. Go ahead. Julie. I would like to add, um, it was kind of a, a miss on our part. Typically, we do tie variances to buildings and projects. Um, we didn't obviously want to restrict this variance to when this portable goes away so that they, they would have to request a new variance. So we would um, hope that the commission would recommend approval based off of their entire master plan so we can hit these parking benchmarks as they do the new building permits and um, the new projects. So. so the the, the whole master plan so then we can, as as new parking lots are built and new buildings we're not having to revisit this variant situation um, so we would hope that, that you would include that recommendation to city council and then we can include that in the resolution okay so yeah, we very much appreciate that churches typically have problems with the rather arbitrary way that these counts are made but we have to respect the way that the staff does its analysis uh, it's just that the numbers have to be shown to uh, be acceptable but when we go into permitting in the future. That would be very helpful. Thank you. Well, wait, 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 wait. Let, let Mr. Heimseth finish. All right. Thank you. Anything you want? Okay. Any comments between commissioners? I have some questions. Go ahead, Vic. According to um, the stages of the, of the plan as presented to us, where the school is, they're going to go down to 22 spaces, but then when the final project's finished, it's going to be 21. Does that create a problem with the variance if we actually end up losing one space on that property versus, because we can't give a variance for the whole project, right? We'd have to do just that property. Um, I think we would try our best to um, tie it together as the Trinity campus. Oh, it was a campus project? She's okay. tying it all together. Okay. I just, I'm just, i in favor of it. I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to create any problem that we're at 22 and that ultimately the final end is that on our, that our code block allows it's going to be 21. shared parking agreements, um, mm -hmm. so it, it would comply in that way. Okay. Thank you, Julie. Anybody else have any more comments, questions? I move we approve. Okay. I have a motion from Mr. Mr. 
Why? We keep oh. forgetting those public oh. hearings. Those pesky well, public hearings. Well, it's because we know what they Please. They're all in favor of Anybody, uh, <laughs> we have to have a public <laughs> hearing on the variance. I'm sorry. Okay. I apologize. Anybody wish to address the commission on that, this item? Okay. All right. Now I move that we approve. Okay. Thank you, sir. I All apologize right. for... No, being... no. Uh, okay, we have a motion from Mr. Caldwell. Second. And we have a second from Ms. Welder that we approve the variance conditioned on its a Trinity campus and all... Okay. According to the master plan. According yeah, to their according master, master plan. plan. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Variance approved. Thank you. Y'all right. so can't leave till we can leave. Now you have to stay to the end. <laughs> Make them stay to the end. That's right. Our tires are safe. Hold on. I can't believe I forgot the public hearing. Our tires are safe. Hi, Penny. Our tires are safe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You have to stay to the end. I was going to say, y'all can't leave till we leave. Can't leave. <laughs> right? <laughs> it was a really mob. Unruly mob. They're obviously not paying any attention. Long overdue. That right. project is Waiting long, on you. long overdue. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Charles. So last item on the agenda is the monthly development report. Let me go ahead and maximize this real quick for us. Oh, sorry. Go away. Um, is the monthly development report. Um, this month we had two minor plats come in for Ashley Furniture Subdivision and a resubdivision of RV Park of Victoria. Um, one major plat for the original town site resub number 81, which we voted on today. Um, four site plans for Golke Oil Change, RV Park of Victoria, Ashley Furniture, and Outlaw Off-Road, um, as well as one city council action for the um, comprehensive plan update for 2035, um, which was approved. Um, as well, this month we um, had seven new single-family residential homes. Um, that's up from or down from 15 last year. Um, three new commercial constructions, which is up from this time last year of two. Um, we had 141 um, total permits, um, which is um, down from this time last year of 184. Um, we issued 148 MEP permits, um, which is down from 171 last year. Um, as well, we collected $79,000 in permit fees, um, which is up from this time last year of 41453 any questions? any questions of Mr. Charles? Okay. <clears throat> any other business? So the last item is the comprehensive plan. It was approved at the um, April, or adopted at the April 5th uh, City Council meeting. Right. And so we're just waiting on the final pretty documents back from the consultant and once we get those we'll print them and um, each of you will receive your own copy so we can then start implementation. <laughs> awesome. Th thank you, Jill. Thank you. All right. Any items from the planning commissioners? I got one. Anybody? Jerry, yes. Go ahead. Would you mind looking into or get some feedback to us on the advantages or disadvantages of a five-year cap on extensions? And what other municipalities are using exactly. yeah, around sure. our... We'll look into that. Uh, if you could just kind of give us some guidance well, on that. that we need to look to see if there's some state law. That's a good point. Kind of, kind of, you know, what direction do we need to go in that? If you can kind of, what are the municipalities used? Is it, are there advantages to it, disadvantages to it? Is that something we need to address as a commission? If you could okay. kind we'll of get some information on that and disseminate it out to us, I'd appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Do I have a motion so for moved. adjournment? Okay. A motion from Mr. Wood. Second? Second. Okay. Second from Mr. Rashid. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Let's go home. Thank you all.